Hey, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Brandon Dempsey here with worshipteentraining.com. How are you? It's great to have you this morning. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, and you made it from Sunday worship. You made it from leading worship on this past Sunday, and you're living to tell about it. We hope that you are living well, and you're telling great things about what God has done through your worship services and your church and your ministry. Great friends come on already. Harry, what's up? Our great friend on Periscope. Who else is coming in? Welcome, everybody, on Facebook Live and also on Periscope. Hope that you guys are doing great. Welcome also to our fantastic playback viewers, playback listeners, also on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. We thank you guys for joining us. Again, my name is Brandon Dempsey of WorstTeenTraining.com, and it is so good to have you on this Tuesday. How are you, everybody? Great to have you. If you would, if this is the first time that you are either watching or listening to the show by playback, let us know what's up. Just uh, type in your name in the comment window and say hi, your name, where you're from, city, country. That's great, uh, both on Periscope and Facebook Live. And if you're listening to our audio, then do the same thing by typing into the comment window, and we will be sure to get that. So what's up, Scott? What's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. And uh, Scott Hussey from GuideTracks.co. Make sure that you go see Scott. And also Gord, um, a couple of our students, Gord and also Harry Walls on Worcester Training University. So let's get right into it. Let's go. Who am I? My name is Brandon Dempsey. I'm a follower of Jesus, and I happen to be the founder and CEO of WorshipTeamTraining.com. And what do we do? What is that? Glad that you asked. All that is, simply we come to your church to provide a one- or two-day workshop, either a regional event or a very private, small workshop just for you and your worship team. And that's highly customized according to your needs, your strengths, your weaknesses. We go over all those together as a team. And we address that works. We address the items and tools that work for you. Not like another conference that's down the street, but specifically tailored to your needs. We do the same thing in our what's called our mentoring program. And you can find that. You can find both of those at worshipteentraining.com slash workshops slash mentoring and you will find our mentoring studies that includes a 10-week study broken down to look like you we meet once a week by video just like this or among any of our other staff members and we walk through a book that's personally crafted and written for you as well as we go over tools and relevant needs that you face in your ministry lastly you also want to check out wttu.co that is our university online on-demand program we are coming out with our new website. Can't wait. That's going to be in the next two, three weeks. We are about uh, just a little bit all the way through. We're just a few bells and whistles we're putting on. Uh, but if you're a member already at WTTU.co, you'll see some of the other major content, that, uh, major content items that we're putting in right now in terms of – thank you for uh, showing the love for the beard, by the way. Worship leader beard, that is. He's getting worship leader hair. Sorry to digress here, but I may. Uh, worship leader hairs get a little jealous of worship leader beards. So pray for worship leader hair that worship he can, you know, tolerate what's happening down here. Okay, anyway, I just had people comment on that. Had to address it. Sorry. It's the way it goes. Anyway, uh, WTTU.co, we are adding much more content to our vault. More videos, more articles. We have new Monday morning Bible studies. And also we're coming out with our brand new Wednesday music. We're calling it our brown bag special. And that's going to be at 12 o'clock. Not yet, but coming up soon. So be sure that you're here for that. And if you want to try out uh, the university program, just email me. That's Brannon, B-R-A-N-O-N, at W-T-T-U dot C-O. Take us up on a one-month free trial offer. Just email me, Brannon at W-T-T-U dot C-O. All right, so let's jump into it. Last week, we talked about your worship team, how to build the sound, how to make it bigger, and uh, you'll see right now that it's just you and I. Usually we have a guest on, uh, but I wanted to teach the solo today because a lot of you guys have been asking, hey, Brandon, this is great, but we just want to see and hear you teach. And the reason why I've had guests on here every week is because I think it's valuable, it's incredible, it's important to learn from other people's experiences and their circumstance. Last week we talked to Sharice. The week before that, it was Tim Tibbles. And we have a lot of fantastic men and women that share what they had to bring to the table. So I wanted to just share with you today personally. I hope that's okay. And just to share with you what's been going on in my heart within worship, 
uh, with them building teams and making things uh, very, very conducive for the building of what God is doing in your worship ministry. I find that important. So I want to be asking you some questions this week. Calcia, what's up? Good to have you too. A lot of other great members. If you guys would slide over, if you haven't already, on Facebook, go ahead and please like us. Hit the like button and also share out the program. Please do that. And Periscope, just swipe and invite. Please do that as well. Share out our broadcast. Really greatly appreciate that and thank you for doing so. Uh, you're going to find much more stuff coming up, so I can't wait to share everything with you. So be sure that you're on the lookout for everything that's happening. So we have this. We are talking about the building of your team. I want to be asking you questions. So in the meantime, there is like a little bit of a delay here by video and by audio. There's a little bit of a delay as well. Sorry. But if you want to ask a question, just type it in the comment box window. And it may take a few seconds, but then once I see it, then I can go ahead and address it. If you're listening by audio playback, it's just simple. Just type in the box. Just type in the comment window, and it sends a, a direct email message to us, and I'll get it. So let us know what's going on. So here we go. Talk. We're talking this week. Tom Corder is going to be on this coming Thursday to talk about it more. But I want to ask you, let's go with our first question. Uh, what's important for worship teams? What do you think is important for a worship team? This week, we're talking about the building of a worship team. Now, if you guys, uh, and I ask these questions so that you can also have time to type in, because I know that typing on iPad and iPhone, especially by like my big fingers, take a little while. So I'm giving you time to do that. Again, the question, what's important for worship teams? What is important for your worship team? Now, as I get into that, to answer that question and to hear back from you, we put up a graphic last week uh, that's for this week's show, today's show. It says, Build Your Team by Character, Not by Talent, which also, of course, happens to be the title. Build Your Team by Character, Not by Talent. I want to know what does that mean to you? What are the most important things that mean for you as a worship team? Michelle, what's up? You, were, you, you, were, you let me <laughs> slow down and watch my speech. University members, you know exactly what we're talking about, so please chime in and let us know your thought. What is important to you about your worship team? When it comes to worship teams, what is important? I kind of reverse that question around there. But here's the deal that really gets me, is that there are so many of us worship teams and worship leaders that we see a great guitar player, you see a great keyboardist, or you hear about one in the church, oh man, they play drums. This is awesome. Has that happened to you in your church? And you hear about the buzz going around, and you're like, wow, great guitar player. Uh, I, I heard them play last week at this other you know, worship event or outdoor thing, and man, they're really, really cool. Or you heard from another friend, hey man, this drummer rocks. He can throw it down. I think this would be great for us for a team. How many times has that happened to you? Maybe you're in, you're in the same experience as Sharice, who was here last week, where she's like dying to find a great guitar player that she heard about within her church and wants to grab him and put him in the team. So what comes across your mind first? Is it the greatness of their skill or is it the greatness of their heart? Now, please understand as we go through today's show and this week, this is not by any means to deny that skill is lesser important because it's not. I find it equally important because if you have a skillful, skillful heart, that should extrude from the way that you play and also the way that you carry yourself in terms of your character, your attitude, and your professionalism. Now, for those of you guys that follow us on Instagram, thanks so much for following us, by the way. Michelle says this, by the way, on Periscope before I get there. She says... It's their heart backed by their actions. I love it. Thank you, Michelle. Mwah. Love that. What else do you guys have to say? Periscope, Facebook Live, talk to us. Rossi says this. She says, hey, what's up? Blessing from Veracruz, Mexico. Yes, uh, blessings, uh, mi hermano. What's us? And Harry says, relationship is paramount. If you can't get along with people, it's going to be hard. Yes. Why is it going to be hard? That's the question, Harry. Calling out you, my man, good friend over on the West Coast. 
Why would relationships be hard? So we're kind of a two-way topic here going on. We're talking about what's the first thing that goes off in your mind when you hear about a musician in your church. Is it their skill? And then what about relationships? Harry says this, ministry flows from relationships. I love you. Thank you, Harry. Scott Hussey says this, never sacrifice skill for lack of heart. Yes, I love that. Skill is equally important, but how often is it? Yes, hola, brother, and Rossi. How often is it that when you see somebody, or even worse, this is even worse, what about when your drummer or your, ba oh man, whoa, no one can do without the bass player in a weekend, am I right? Man, when my bass player says, like, this coming week, this coming Sunday, he's going to be out, I desperately grab my second string bass player and say, hey, you're coming from Austin, you're going to play today. You're going to play this, well, not today, but you're going to play on Sunday. You know, what's it like for you when you know that your bass player is gone and you know of another person that plays and they're skillful, what do you do? So, you know, again, it's not to deny skill, but do you easily go for the candy of, wow, I heard them play, they're, they're fantastic, or a singer, a worship leader that you know, and maybe you're going to be out for the weekend, and you're like, yeah, but can they lead? Oh, I mean, that's, that's even more dangerous territory now, right, that I'm stepping in on. Yeah, I know, it kind of hurts a little bit, right? Because you're like, yeah, but Brandon, we need to have this other player, or we need to have this other worship leader step in. But what do you know about their heart? What do you know about their character? Scott Hussey says this, I always check their heart and depth of worship before their level of musicianship. Thank you, Scott. GuyTracks.co. I love it. I love that. Uh, checking their heart. This is what we do. We have people that come up, want to play, they want to join the team. And what I first tell them is, and maybe this is a question from you, I don't know. Uh, when you handle you know, new volunteers, how do you recruit? How do you expand your team? We're talking about how to build a team, right? Uh, recruiting is part of it. And I use the word recruiting loosely, so don't take it in the wrong you know, uh, professional job sense. That's not what I mean. But when you have people that come in and they want to join your team, what we do, I have them come out to a simple rehearsal. And what I do is I have them come early and say, hey, you know, I'd love for you to bring your instrument, or if you play piano or drums, then we have one waiting for you. And I just want to spend time first hearing about your journey. So for the first, like before rehearsal begins, I budget in time to meet them early. 15, 20, 30 minutes, let's sit down. I just want to hear about where you're from, where God's brought you, your journey, uh, what's going on in your life that you would like to share with me, that you feel comfortable, I'd like to know. And then once I get a, a sound of their heart and I get a, an idea of where God's Spirit is moving within them, that gives me further uh, conversation ideas to where to take it from there. Then I hear them play. Okay, um, It's not an audition. This is not America's Got Talent by the church. By the way, that would probably not be a great show anyway. But get to know their heart and their integrity. Ask them questions. You may be asking, well, then what, you know, ask this of your own team. When's the last time that you've asked these questions of your own team? I talked about this from a new member standpoint, but what about from your own existing members? Do you really know them? If you want to build a team by character, and yes, if you want to build a team by skill, what are you doing to nurture that? Scott Hussey says this also. Also, always protect the honor of leading on the platform. The tabernacle was protected beyond the outer courts. Absolutely. The Levites took their job and role seriously. Why? Because God takes his worship seriously. And as Tony Guerrero calls it, we are today's modern Levites. Today's modern Levites. And we have to do whatever we can to protect the people of God, his church. You don't want just some person up there that, yeah, that can, you know, shred it out on their acoustic guitar or accordion or whatever, right? And they're going through good, good father. And man, they can just throw it down on accordion. Yeah, I like to hear that, right? So if that were to happen, what about their heart? What if they did something or wore something or said something that was, uh, 
not in line with the rest of your church congregation. And then you get that weird, we're going to have a talk on Monday morning look from your pastor. No, wouldn't go well. Gord says this, God gave me the gift of music before he got a hold of my heart. Yeah, love that too. So he works on the heart even after we may develop the skill. Now for me, uh, when I, my, gro my growing up days, much like you, Gord, I was a musician first. I was a musician first before I came to Jesus. I was at very, very young, but I came to the Lord. And you know what? When I fell in love with Jesus, I knew that I had, that God had heart surgery to perform on my life. That needed to happen first. Let me tell you, there's a lot of musicians right now, even in your own team, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. There's a lot of musicians. Thanks for the hearts, by the way, Periscope. Give me some likes, Facebook Live, come on. Like, love the, love the, the worship leader beard and the hair. See, they kind of got, they're starting to have a little anglage going on both of them. That's why they're competing. I gotta pray for both of them. Sorry, that's how it is. We'll call this worship team beard ministry next, okay? Anyway, hashtag. My mind, don't know what's happening. ADD, I don't think so. This is just me. Let's continue. So when you have a moment, get right with your team. Understand their background. As I was telling you about mine, I knew that God had to perform that heart surgery in my life before I could continue even, even thinking about doing work, even thinking about serving before him. There were things going on with me, and you know, like I was about to say, you know there are team members right now. You're thinking of that one person, right? Right? The one guy. Right? Chris? Yeah. Uh, no, Amy? It's Amy, right? You know it's Amy. Margaret? Oh, Margaret, come on. Everybody's got a Margaret, okay? Who's Margaret? Who's Amy? Those are the people. Chris? Those are the people. I'm, just, I'm not naming names, sorry. I'm protecting the guilty, okay? But those are the people you know in your team that spiritually, uh, there's something just off kilter. The, the, the gears are not turning all the way because when you try to say something spiritual or pray or ask something of them you get this kind of mm, a little bit of a pushback when's the last time have you asked your team members hey have you been spending time with God daily what response do you get have you been reading your Bible have you been praying for one another I think that is equally important to ask those questions, and it's not just new members that I was talking about earlier, but your existing team. If you want to build a team, you have to start with the tough love, with the tough questions. That's why I ask you, the first question getting on this show, what's the, more, uh, the most important thing for teams? My answer, the heart. Let's move on. Number two, why are teams so challenging? All right, so let's talk about Chris, Amy, Margaret. The attitudes of the team, you know, the divas and the devos, right? Come on. We all have them. How do you deal with it? Harry was just talking about the relationships. I want to hear from you. Scott says this, it's our job and worship pastors to help grow the callings into their place of effectiveness. Very good. Thank you, Scott. You should be teaching here today, but now I'm sitting in your chair. How does that feel? Pretty darn good, I bet. So, why are teams so challenging? <laughs> we love to have fun here. Why are teams challenging? Because you have different personalities coming at you in one place. It's called church, right? You have people who think differently. You have others in your team who process information differently. You have those within your team that have likes, that have dislikes, preferences. I mean, if you think it's bad enough going around your church and you hear different people. Harry says this real quick, sorry. Harry says, people are different. As pastors, we are called to manage them. Absolutely. There's a balance, isn't there, between leadership and management. You are to lead, right? God's called you to lead. And to cast vision, to cast, set sail, direction of where you need to go. But you also have to manage how you get there. And part of that managing is of your people. If you think that you're just having a bunch of Guitars, singers, drummers up there with you every week, and you call that leadership, you're mistaken. You're, you're just, that's not leadership. Having people in your team doesn't automatically make you a leader. In fact, just sitting alone in your room doesn't make you a leader either. Making, the making of a leader means 
the making of your heart and what God, what's your drive? What is the drive of your heart? And how are you following after Jesus to making sure that you are right in alignment with his word, but he's given you vision to do what? To help support your people, not you. And this is where a lot of leaders get me messed up because they think leadership is about them. Leadership is not about you. Leadership is about your people. Leadership has to do with you. It has everything to do with you, the way God's wired you, the way that you are able to give direction, the way that you're able to receive direction, right? Because being a good leader, you also have to be moldable. You have to be teachable. You've got to be humble. For what purpose? For your people. And you grow as a byproduct. But it's for your people. Look, the only reason why God puts you there to lead worship to begin with, or the reason why God put a pair of drumsticks in your hand, or a bass, keyboards, whatever, or a fader, you're working the audio, whatever. The only reason why God puts you there is because of the people who are around you. The people who you are among in leading worship. A conductor is always needed. Perspectives need to be brought into unity as one. Like, like, like on Facebook Live by Scott. Thank you for that, Scott. So what about you? When you are leading your worship team, what becomes most important to you? Because let me just give you a wake-up call. Whatever you think is most important to you is probably less essential for everybody else. In fact, let me just, let me just be real with you. People don't care unless they know that you care. People don't care unless they know that you care. That's just simply it. I'm just giving, you, I'm just giving it to you straight. This is why leadership is so tough. Because it causes you to care for others. Even if you don't feel like it. That doesn't matter. You as a leader need to place your preferences aside. And you need to meet people where they are. That's the calling on my life. I hope it's a calling on your life. Comment in. Let me know what's up. What are you thinking about so far? Periscope, Facebook Live. Audio. iTunes. Let's go. That is one incredible cup of Jesus juice. Getting back to it. Why are teams so challenging? The personalities, right? Get to know your divas and divos. Get with them offline. Instead of saying, yeah, but I don't like working with this person. Or I don't like having this individual on the team because they do A, B, and C. Or they say one, two, three, whatever that it is that they say or do. You know what? When's the last time that you've ever talked with them offline? When's the last time that maybe if they did say something that was out of line that you just took them to the side and say, hey, you know what, um, we're, we're alone here one-on-one, -on -one, and you know, back at rehearsal, this happened. Can you tell me what's on your mind and tell me what you're going through? Can I help? That is a sure number one way to help equal footing, get to the heart of the matter, and deal with the issue at a hand. I know easier said than done. I get it. But if you don't do it, who will? Otherwise, all these problems fester. When's the last time that you took out your bass player or a guitar player, whoever, uh, for coffee or you bought them a cup of coffee? Whatever that is, you just give it to them or just make time with them. Talk with them. If, if the only time that you have is maybe at church, when's the last time that you just, you know, put your arm around them to say, hey, you know? I mean, that's what I do with my one guitar player, Lowell. I say, hey, Lowell, man, how's it going? What's going on with the job? Um, you're talking about this happening last week. I mean, tell me more about it. What can I pray for? It's, it's that kind of interaction. It's that kind of uh, webbing and having with your worship team that really makes those relationships happen. Harry says this, it's amazing what you learn about people when you sit across from them at the table. Absolutely. Amen. Harry, when you invited me over to your dinner, I already asked you that before. I haven't gotten an invite. <laughs> so it's all about knowing your people. Because when you know about your people, you know exactly musically also where they come from. But here's, here's the hard truth. When you have these festering attitudes, you got it, my brother. Harry's just responding back. When you have these festering attitudes, when you have the relational errors that are surfacing and they're not being dealt with, you're having these underlying issues that are not going addressed.
what happens? It interrupts your rehearsal time. It defaces your own leadership. It causes confusion among your people. It also is a negative influence because it tells other people, oh, I, I can act like this too and get away with it because Brandon won't care. And then five, the worst thing, you're leading worship with all of this relational spaghetti mess going on. And what I mean by spaghetti mess is that there are so many uh, things in the mix of that bowl that everybody else sees. And I'm sorry, but your church sees it. And if you think for a second that they don't, you're mistaken. It doesn't mean no team is perfect. Every team is going to have, I'm not, look, let me just say this. Every team and every person in that team is going to have their own preferences. They're going to have their own ways of doing things. That's fine. That's what makes the church so beautiful. But the worst thing about it is when we try to cover things up because maybe the guitar player's got a, if he's got a bad mouth or you have a singer over here that's got a grudge against another singer, that comes through. I mean, I, I had one instant a, a long time ago when I first started leading worship. Somebody came to me after the service and they said, Brandon, hey, I, I see that there's a problem between these two singers over here. And I, I said, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, they were kind of getting a little upset about the solo that they were one wanted to sing versus what the other one wanted to do. And then the question from that, this was a congregation member, pulled me to the side privately and just said, okay, but what are you doing about it, Brandon? Wow. I mean, I learned early on that, man, if, if that's happening on stage and people see that, it's a result of my leadership. It's not so much that they're the problem. It's because it was my problem that I didn't handle it. Now, no, I can't jump inside of people's minds. I can't jump inside their shoes and just change everything. But what I can do is get with both of them or one of them one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, and just say, hey, um, what seems to be the, the, the diff between you guys and how can I help? If you present yourself more as a helper, you're going to make yourself more a builder for that team. Last question. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for the hearts, the likes, and commenting. It's fantastic. We're going to have more times like this, huh? One-on-one, -on -one, just me and you. You like that? Love it. How can you make improvements that begin with you? Like that congregation member that I just said when they asked me, but Brandon, what are you doing about it? So I'm asking you the same question. Last point here. How can you make improvements that begin with you? Not with somebody else. It's not about, well, but I want to get them off the team. No, your team is not an environment to fire, okay? That's not why God gave you this team. God gave you the team to grow it. And if it means that maybe you need to have a tough love session with whatever member it is on your team, then you need to go to them in love. And I would do this before you go to them privately. And if you're tripped up on what you want to say because you don't know how to say it, go to your pastor. That's what your pastors, your senior pastors are there for you, worship leader. Don't look at them as a, yeah, but they're going to see then that maybe I can't handle that person or they're going to see me as being incompetent. No, it's the opposite. They're going to see... Like this, Harry says, read, pray, have another eye that focuses on things that you can't see. Exactly. Thanks, Harry. That's exactly what your pastor is for. Your pastor, on the other hand, will look at you and just say, you know what? They're coming to me because they trust me. So I'm going to pour what I can into them to help them. That's how they should look at it. Now, if you don't have a pastor that's supportive in that way, then I would still communicate with them and let them know what's going on. But maybe do it at a different level and go to another person that you trust and ask them for advice. But the whole deal is that I'm, I'm pleading with you, do not take matters in your own hands if you don't know how to face it. Go to your senior pastor. Go to a trusted friend that can shed objective light on the situation where they're not partial to you, but they can just say, hey, you know what? You may want to think about this instead before you say this to them. Or when you say it to them, maybe couch it this way. That's my best advice to you. This is it's not only going to be growing you as a leader, but again, the emphasis, growing your team. It starts with you. 
another point. Look into yourself. Look into the mirror and just ask the question, okay, what is it about me that I don't want to deal with this person? Or what is it about me that I am not organized when I do rehearsal? What is it about me that prevents me from communicating with my pastor? What is it about me that I get maybe a little scared when I lead worship or in between songs? <clears throat> what am I going to say? Those things you bring to Jesus, those things start with you that God can work in through your life when you present them to him and be vulnerable and say, Hey, God, um, you know all things, and I can't hide this from you, but you know what's going on with me, and A, B, and C is the problem. How can you help me find that solution? Teach me, Lord Jesus, how to pray so that I may learn. Guys, I plead with you to look deep within your heart and find out what are those empty crevices going on within your soul that echo the trouble, the challenge, the upset. Maybe it was something that happened at another church years ago. Maybe it was something that happened on the way to church on that day that you're leading. Whatever that it is, are you really bringing those things to God, worship leader? I'm asking you, pastor, audio tech, musician, singer. And then also, what are you doing right now to help build your team in the way that they should go? Encouraging them, loving them, spending time devotionals with them, praying with them. Yes, speaking into their life, asking the hard questions. You know, it doesn't mean that you need to learn about everybody's dirty laundry. That's not what I'm saying. But yeah, absolutely. They will understand what you're dealing with in a way that no one else does. Thanks, Harry. And then skill. I mean, yeah, now we can talk all day long about skill. Skill is something to be harnessed, to be practiced, to be rehearsed. Make sure that when you're working on your skill, you're not doing it in the time when everybody else is rehearsing. In other words, what I mean is, you're not practicing at home and you're saving it for rehearsal. No. That's, that's a huge no-no. That's why it's called rehearsal time, not practice time. And if you're calling your own rehearsal times practice time at your church, you need to change your vocabulary and understand what the differences are. Practice is at home. Rehearsal is at what your church, what you rehearse and what you practice. That's the difference. Develop your skill. Ten minutes a day. I turn to my keyboard. I turn to my guitars. Ten minutes a day, as much as I can, and I just practice on what I can. And I'm telling you, I even have my own guitar player come back after Sunday because I encourage that same thing as I tell them every week. And he said, you know what? He said, you're right. That ten minutes a day really did help. I mean, even if I just had to just learn, relearn how to make new shapes with an A chord on the fretboard, you know, because now I'm using it in rehearsal. Okay, no brainer. So do that. But those are the three top things that I'm asking of you. These are the three top things about how to build your team. Number one, find out the most important thing about your worship team. Number two, what we talked about, why are teams so challenging? The relationships, working through that, navigating through those personal things. And the third thing, what can you do to make improvements that begin with you? So I ask these tough love questions for you because I care about you. And I know that your church loves you and cares about you too. So don't think for a second that you're of any less than that because God put you in those positions for a reason. So honor the Lord with your wealth of your knowledge, with the wealth of your heart, with the wealth of your character and your attitude and your skill. Do you like this? you guys like this video? Then you're really going to love this coming Thursday. We're going to have Tom Corder on. And you've got to become a member here at WTTU.co. If you love what you heard today, I'm telling you what, you're going to get a double dose of this with Tom, but if you become a member at WTTU.co, you're going to get a quadruple dose, a throwdown deuce of all this content. More videos just like this. Thank you, Harry. More articles just like this. More webinars just like this. Podcasts. We also have our brand new Monday morning live Bible devotionals. You can't miss any of this. Thanks, JCG, number one. Appreciate that. 
if you become a member, you get all the stuff and it's just like a latte a month. That's how much it costs to like a digital download. So I encourage you, I invite you to do this. And all it takes, if you want a free membership for a month, hit me up, email b-r-a-n-o-n at w-t-t-u dot c-o because we are serious about you and serious about your training. Anyway, join us this coming up. Thank you for that, Gord. Training coming up this Thursday. Tom Croyder, next on our next webinar for October. Kent Morris, the man, the audio guru, is going to be here to tell us about the effective ways that we can use audio, video, and media in your church services to make your worship different and make it more engaging and more effective. You don't want to miss that. we got more guests coming up, so don't miss it. Be sure to check out our event schedule, wttu.co. You'll find everything there. And be sure to check out worshipteamtraining.com to check out workshops and mentoring and what we can do for you and your worship team. Again, worshipteamtraining.com. Thank you guys for joining us. Harry, love you. You mean Thursday. I know that. Love all you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And I can't wait uh, to come back to you and to uh, just share all the goodness of what God is doing right here within you. So love you guys very much. Thanks so much for coming in. Worshipteentraining.com. I'm Brandon Dempsey. Love you. Bye.